in order to clearly understand this problem I need to give you a demonstration so watch carefully here we go so what we do have is a ground or a horizontal plane and we have a block let's say this this glass okay resembles a block now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply this force P let's say right at the bottom okay what will happen this force P is good enough or just enough to move this block towards the left hand side isn't it okay now if I apply this force P slightly upwards from the previous position this will still slide okay if I go further up it's gonna still slide but if I go further up okay then what happens is this and this is what you call tipping over this is what you call tipping over the this this glass no longer slides um, towards the left hand side but what really happens is this tipping over activity and it is in this state we are supposed to find this height d so let me explain you once again you need to find how high this force p needs to be applied such that such that the block just moves without tipping in other words you can also say how high this force p should be applied so that the block just tips over absolutely the same thing now again if the block tips it is going to tip about this particular point a about like this like this this is the point a and when it tips the point of contact at b breaks so the forces that we're going to work with are let me show you rather well there is going to be a normal force at a somewhere here let me make this uh, let's call this as na well there is no point of contact at b okay as the block is just about to tip and if it's going to move in this direction there is obviously there is obviously going to be some kind of friction force towards um, this direction so this friction force is nothing but a product of coefficient of friction mu and this normal reaction that is n a any other force that we need to work with i don't think so okay now again we need to apply the equations of equilibrium for static equilibrium to be very precise now first of all i'm going to go ahead and apply this summation of all the forces x direction is equal to zero what are they so we've got this p we've got this mu na mu na is positive p is negative mu na minus p is equal to zero so that's the first equation now let's chalk out our equation number two that is going to be the summation of all the forces in y direction now we've got this mg downwards na upwards well this is positive this is negative na minus mg na minus mg is equal to zero now guys for this particular problem we need to take the or frame the moment equation also so we have to take the moment about a specific point well what is that point infinite number of points are there but you have to be very clever while choosing the point okay now if you watch carefully if you take the moment about point a what will happen you have to work with one two three and four forces four forces and if you watch carefully these two forces na and mu na both of them are passing through point a itself therefore their moments are going to be zero right so you are left with this force mg and this force p now if you watch carefully let us take the moment about point a is equal to zero and let us try to frame an equation now this p force okay if you keep your thumb over here and keep your move your baby finger rather in this direction you will have an anti-clockwise bending moment something like this anti-clockwise bending moment and it's going to be p multiplied by so that's the line of action of this force p and that's the distance this distance from here until we reach here this is nothing but d p dot d and since it it is anti-clockwise you have to put a plus sign now we are left with this mg now this is right at the center okay and this distance my friends is nothing but half of this b so it's got to be b over 2 so mg multiplied by b by 2 mg put your thumb over here at a and you move your baby finger along this direction you will have a clockwise bending moment clockwise bending moment pertains to a negative sign it's going to be mg dot what it's going to be b by 2 all of this stuff is going to be equal to zero so there you go we have framed our moment equation and what we are supposed to find is this value d so let me write this d is equal to m g b over what over 2p 
Well, that's it. From this equation, you can clearly see that from here, P is equal to mu Na. Mu Na. Well, that's right. And Na is equal to mg. So, in place of this Na, what you can write as this mg. So, let us substitute mu mg in place of this P. And when you do so, you'll have this mgb in the numerator divided by 2 multiplied by what? Mu mg. Mu mg. Well, g and g cancel out, m and m cancel out. And that's the final value of t. d is equal to b over 2 mu. Well, that's it, guys. So, this force p, this force p should be at a height of v upon 2 mu in order to make sure that this block does not tip over. That's it. So, guys, that was all from my side. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.